The fuck, bro? Hey, 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 dude, give us a Yeah, yeah, well, what, what, what's up, Ed? What's on your uh, mind? I don't know why you're fucking looking at me like I'm fucking, fucking annoyed already, but, but look, look, look at this, man. I got, yeah. I got my papers, man. Check this out. Papers? Hold, hold let me, hold, I'm fucking, hold on, wait. wait. Look at that, what? man. I got my gay papers, man. Your gay papers? Wait. Yes, the fucking Department of Gators. We... U.S. Department of Gays, uh -huh. okay? J they just legalized same sex marriage. You see that shit? Yeah, okay, I, I know. I, I watched. I watched the news. I saw. I saw. They legal. Okay. That means gay people can get married. Did you know that? Okay. Yeah, gay people can get married. I mean, I'm I'm happy so for it, Dom. It's it's marriage. It's marriage equality. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that means gay people can get okay, married. Okay. Okay, Eddie. What, what are you telling me this for, man? Well, look, I saw they, the news. They said what? what? Look, the paper says uh -huh. basically all, all past all the legalese. It says. <sighs> Oh, oh, oh. oh, it says it says I gotta be gay now, man, or else. Eddie, I don't think that's what the paper says. What? It, that's what it says, right? Fuck! Give, give me that shit. Look, it says, it says, you are required. You are Eddie, required. Did you, did you print this out yourself? No, man. Let's look. Look, I've been thinking about this shit, man. I, 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 I don't, I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do, but look, I trust you a lot. Uh. Uh, Cause we've been pals for a long time. Known you for a long time, Eddie. I, I know. Known you for a long. And look, man, I, I, I'm thinking we, you, you and I should get married, man. Uh, That's the only uh, fucking way. And uh, 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 listen, 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 uh, listen to only... me. You're, you're barking up the wrong tree, my friend. Listen, do you know that there are the benefits to getting I'm, get married, Eddie? I'm aware you... the benefits. I don't want to offend you. I don't want to offend you, what, but what, what I just want to say that if this went down. I don't think you would be in my top fifteen. What are you? What are you talking about? Are you, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good looking guy. You saying I'm fucking? You saying I'm fucking ugly? Look, I I, I ain't gay, but I'm saying I'm a fucking catch. No, I, I'm I'm dating down here. Okay, I'm going. You, you're you're I'm I'm out of your fucking league. Okay. Oh wait, wait, fucking... wait, 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 wait. I'm I'm out of your league. Yeah. Look at you. I'm a, I'm a, Ed. I'm out of your league. Look, yeah, but look. I got, I got these pecs. I got. These these biceps, man. Girls love me. You fucking guys love me too, man. I get Ed, I get guys. Eddie, I get guys Eddie, all the time. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie to listen me. to me. I'm not gonna fucking marry you. I'm not gonna fucking marry. I don't care if you got your gay papers and you fucking printed it out on fucking Microsoft Office. I don't know where the hell you got this paper. This fuck is, you, man. Hey, fuck you, man. We're done, okay? I'm done with you, motherfucker. Don't ask me to come out of that dumbass show either. Man. I'm gonna fuck you, motherfucker. You're listening to the Double Deuce podcast. I'm done. I'm to respect. You got a great set of tips. Dude, I get so angry thinking about this kid. Because that's what most people are bitching about. I'm from New York. You heavy. We like to eat out here. You, know? you gotta stop looking at interacting with people online as a cheap date. <gasps> My father used to drink. Get the fuck away from me. I'm done. I come a lot, by the way. Hey, you're a good boy, the rap star. If you didn't say it, somebody in the comment section would have said it. It's like how you feel when you're having a paranoid high. That's a dynamic connection right there. You're listening to the Double D's Podcast. I'm dumb. I'm due respect. If you're listening to the Double D's Podcast via iTunes, we always want to remind you to be active within the iTunes community. Please comment. Please subscribe. It helps... The Double D's podcast out so well. Very much. How you doing there, fellow? It feels like a while since we talked. It always feels like a while since we talked. It's because you, you long for me, sir. You long for me. I am an unattainable object to you. That's what this is. It'd be so awesome if you didn't exist and you were just in my head. I think about that all the time, man. That'd yeah, because so cool. you're a fucking closet solipsist. I've, I've told you this many times. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking explain explain to the people what solipsism is. I think only probably like twenty well, percent of our crowd knows what that is. Well, if if I can explain it properly, I guess it's the belief that you are you are the only being within your own reality. Everyone else is, I guess, a figment of your imagination. Yes, uh, right. But it goes deeper, okay? Because solipsism is like everyone. I guess that may, maybe there are different uh, sort of um, beliefs as to why it is the way that it is. Well, when I was twelve and I was a solipsist, I believed I had that theory that everyone was created to appease me or to make me buy into the the fantasy of reality. Okay, so, so the Truman the, Show, basically. Yes. 
Okay. But there, but there, a whole existence. Like I leave, I I go into the grocery store. That lady has been manufactured to make me think that the grocery store is real. Okay. After I'm done talking to her, I leave the grocery store, and she ceases to exist, or she just like she just deactivates. Mm-hmm. But I am the only person. So D respect's not real. You, the listener, are not real. It's just me. So this this period of solipsism this lasted like how long? It wasn't. I didn't really believe it. I just sort of entertained the idea. It was all, I I think it was uh I got the idea when I was around 11 and I think I think I might have been 13 or 14 where I was like, "Oh yeah, that's dumb. It doesn't make sense. People have people have their own lives." Right. There are other things that are occurring simultaneously while you're alive. So th- what's the explanation behind that? Yeah, I mean Oh, oh no, 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 no. That's easily explained. Are you kidding me? How? This is just yet another uh, ploy to fake. trick you? Yes. It's all, it's like, I, I know, so some, I know what Some Italy crazy is. fucker shot up a bunch of black people in order to distract you from something. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, it's like, oh, wow, this war, this, this, this kind of sucks, right? It's scary down there in South Carolina. <laughs> and like, okay, you've never been to China. No. But you know China exists. Yeah. How do you know China exists? You've never been there, son. Mm-hmm. So when you go on an airplane... If you decide, I got to go to the fucking Great Wall to see how these motherfuckers are tricking me. I got to go to make sure that it exists. So you get in a plane. Come to what... Great Wall. Come see our architecture. Oh, my God. I know God. China. I, like I, know, I, I know China exists because on every block, on every corner, there's a Chinese food restaurant with a pushy person on the telephone who has no interest in your business whatsoever. So I know these people exist. And I Welcome know... to Lenny's. Yeah. That's not your fucking name. What, welcome to Lenny's. It's always Lenny's, uh, Luck, Lucky Johnny. Kitchen or something like that. I think the one on my block is called like Lucky Kitchen. Yeah, He's yeah. Like, Lucky no Kitchen. motherfucker. If your name is May Shu, I'll fucking say that. Okay. <laughs> I know all these hood people won't say it, but I'll say it right. Mm-hmm. I get your point, though. I, 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 oh, oh yeah. I, so I, I get, get into point. a plane, and here is my theory. It's like when you're playing a video game and you have a loading screen. You go from one menu to the, you go from one zone to the other. The reason it takes you 14 hours to go to China, I figured this out is because they're generating China. They're creating China. Okay. To load China takes the language packs, the, all the Chinese people. It takes the them... The sprites, everything? Yes, it takes them 15 hours to make that. So when I get into the plane, it's also the illusion of distance, you understand? Mm-hmm. It might actually only take them 20 minutes to make China. It could only take 10 seconds for them to load China. But it has to. Be, I have to be the person thinking that it takes that long. So what happens is I get into the plane... I fly up into the air, air with quotes. I fly into the air. I'm hung with, I'm suspended by strings, okay? The plane is suspended by strings and. It's in the same exact place. Exactly. It's like, everything's buzzing. And there's just some treadmills under there, whatever the fuck. And when I touch back down, they've just, they just fucking uh, swapped out the the terrain for me. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the people, of course. Yeah, also the people. Where did they come from? Oh, they're all generated, just like the people in the grocery store, man. Okay. They don't exist either. Okay. So when you stopped doing this, did you come to terms with your self-centered nature? Or was it just uh, like, oh, this can't be real? It wasn't. Yeah, I did that, that too. I came. What I came to terms with is the knowledge that they actually have a word for this, Sonder. I don't know if it's an official word, but you guys can look it up. Sonder is the understanding that everyone else thinks and has experiences and emotions and uh, very deep histories. And when you sort of really, really come to understand that other people ha- have have consciousness as well, uh, some some people I think become adults and don't don't realize this. But I mean, solipsism they say is a it's a a thing that sort of um, it hits a lot of like super smart kids, like a lot of kids who have book smarts but aren't really emotionally like attached to people. Look at this motherfucker over here called himself a really smart kid. I just said the shittiest part is that they're not emotionally attached to people, mm-hmm. so they just sort of treat them like cattle, which is really fucked up. Mm-hmm. But I got out of that. All right. Right. You, you you know what? I have a different form of solipsism. Everyone exists except for D respect. D respect is the only person who does not exist. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only. 
And disrespect laughing at you saying he doesn't exist is just disrespect yes. for the confirming that he does. Yeah, absolutely. Or does he? He does. Like, he how doesn't. do you know you're real? Prove to me that you are real on the Double D show right now. Prove to you that I'm real? Yeah. Uh, have you seen the size of my head? I can fucking headbutt the shit out of this fucking microphone right now, and this podcast would be over forever. If we were in the same room right now, this would be the perfect time to be like, you just punch me in the face. It's like, <laughs> am I real now? You feel that shit? <laughs> Boom. I I overheard uh, I overheard a, an interview with Gene Wilder. I think it was a blank on blank, actually, with Gene Wilder, where he was talking about uh, his deci- – he, t- he was telling the director of, uh, of Willy Wonka that he chose to – his first scene, if you guys remember Willy Wonka, if you remember uh, Gene Wilder's very Living, first yeah. appearance in the movie is uh, when the kids are outside, everyone's outside, and they're, they're waiting to get inside the chocolate factory, and Willy Wonka comes out, and he's, he's stumbling with a cane. So everybody's wondering whether he's, uh, you know, he's sick, is he dying, what's wrong with him? And Gene Wilder said that he chooses to stumble out and then all of a sudden uh, stumble onto a rock and then flip over and just, you know, just voila, like, I'm not injured, I'm fine. And he said he wanted to do it because from that point on, you didn't know whether he was lying or he was telling the truth. You understand? So Yeah, So because like, all the rumors about him? No, it's because at that point, that's sort of, you know, it's sort of like performance art, I guess, if you think about it. It's, it's just him. Yeah, you know what? I never thought about why he did that. That's no, 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 wait. It's obvious that he was lying because he limps and then he flips. The flipping is the real him. Yeah, the flipping is the real him, but at the same time, but the first your first impression was him coming out there hobbling, so you don't know. So I say that to say this. You, you'll never be quite convinced if I'm real or not because I exist. My voice just exists through these microphone waves, but right. you've seen me in person. So you don't, you don't know right now if this is a fucking machine that's talking to you. You, you have exactly. no clue. You don't know. But, the, but this is all, but, but let's just reiterate here that, that this is extremely fucking self-centered. No, and that's the problem with solipsism. <laughs> this is, this is, that is all about Everything Dom. is about you. Everything is about it's you and about solipsism. Dom. Always remember that. And that's why it's wrong, because you're going to go around being like, oh, this girl... This girl who's sucking my dick right now is just here to make me think that girls are real. Get away from me, bitch. <laughs> Push her away from you. <laughs> and I, oh, yeah, tell a girl that no. the next time. No. The next time you guys get to touch a woman. <laughs> tell her that she's only there to... <laughs> Let's be honest. No. Tell me how that goes that <laughs> when you tell a girl that her only purpose happen. is to make you think that existence is real. <laughs> it's my job on this podcast to remind a lot of our listeners that it's going to be a very long time before they ever put their hands on a woman. Unless, of course, it involves a credit card number. If it may be, it involves maybe a cousin um, that they're um, they're taking a picture with. Maybe they put their hands on their cousin's shoulders, maybe mm-hmm. their sisters. But I always want to remind the listeners of this podcast that they are sexually incapable of pleasing a woman. And it's just a reality of the situation. Just come to terms with it because most of you are just ugly as shit. And now that you're done berating and, them, and, and, give and, them one. I, I wasn't done berated, but uh, all right. What, what were you going to suggest? Give them one summer tip for getting the girls. This is like Cosmo. What one summer tip for getting the girls? Okay. One tip. Just one fucking tip. One tip. Don't be yourself. Don't. <laughs> What do you mean? Don't be this weird introverted person oh, who, wants that's the lure, real self? who wants to lure a girl into his lair and tell her about this fucking, this hilarious podcast with these two weird guys. She's not going to have sex with you if you let her listen to this podcast, okay? She's not going to. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> not. I mean, they can be themselves, but they definitely don't don't share this. Don't. You know what? Yeah, I will, I'll piggyback on that. I know a lot of you fucks out there love anime and comics and video games. And girls are going to say things to you like, I want to know what you're into. Like, just tell. No. Okay. Tell them when a girl asks you what you're into, give them, give them the same version that you would give your mom. All right. When she's like, what are you, like, what are you reading over there? Uh, it's a book about like superheroes or something. Mm-hmm. Say that in that same tone. It's not that important. I don't spend all, of it. just don't, don't uh, tell them. How much you actually care about it. It's just like, oh, it's just this thing I do. Mm-hmm. 
and then move on to something else. Don't be like, oh, you gotta see my, you gotta see my comic book collection. It's under my bed. Uh, I gotta. T-. And if she asks you what your book is about, don't tell her everything about it. That's death. That's a death sentence. It's gotta be her a bit of mystery. It's gotta be a bit of mystery to what you do, even if it's dorky, I guess. Yeah, it's gotta be your pussy will shrivel. Just because she won't care. It's just like because you you shouldn't be talking that much. Excuse me. Uh, 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 don't burp in her face. Jesus. All right, if I could give you one tip, um, is to get good at something, anything. I have two tips, all right? I know I said one, but get good at something, like drawing, painting. Like not being yourself. Pretty much. Like not being um, yourself. Let me, let, let me, let me give them an example. Uh, uh, at my job i i have i have an associate there who's about maybe 19 years old and recently a uh, 19 year old kid you know very uh you know very strong build if i may say so myself very chiseled young man how's his dick uh his dick uh, i i don't know what his dick is like but i guess i'll how's find out dick? pretty soon <laughs> so he's in the store with uh, a mother and uh and a young girl around his age and he notices that she has a captain america shirt on now you know this kid is into comic books and everything he actually when he works out at the gym he wears superhero costumes which i think is fucking hysterical <laughs> um so he tells her Aquaman. No, I, I think his uh, his go to th- when he's on the treadmill, he 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 says he puts on a flash suit. Oh my! When he's lifting, god. he has a Captain America oh suit. Oh my god! <laughs> it's it's just funny. Um. So anyway, he's he noticed that the girl has a Captain America shirt on, and he's like, "Oh, Captain America, I like your shirt." And she's like, "Yeah," and she giggles, and then he goes, "Oh, have you heard like about the new movie?" And she's like, "No." And he's like, oh, this person might be in it. That person might be. This girl has no interest whatsoever in the Captain America franchise. <laughs> she just has the fucking shirt on, guys. Yeah, and you yeah. need to realize that just because a girl is wearing the symbol of a Captain America shirt does not mean she wants to go into the great details about the direct <laughs> the direction that the franchise is going to. Like, he, he asked her several questions, and she, was, she did not respond after a while. She just looked around and waited for her <laughs> mother to buy whatever it is that her mother was going to buy, and it was uncomfortable. And I laughed at him when she left the store. It was great. But you it was, what, yeah, good. What I would have said is I would have walked up to her and I would have said, I am a huge fan of Captain America as well. But there's this thing I, I've always been thinking about is you, you get the super serum, right? And he's super skinny and small, whatever, tiny dick. He gets the super serum. Every part of him enlarges. Even his head gets bigger. His brain is bigger. It's able to fire off more efficiently, all that shit. You agree every part of him is bigger now? And she'd be like, um, I, I get. Tell me about his dick. Does his dick get bigger? That's all I want. It has to get bigger. His dick had to be. It has to be, ha- yeah. It's like in nine inches. Not his suit is just his hanging out. Hand, his thigh. It's just, and I, I'm like gesturing with my, my hand, like rubbing mm-hmm. on my thigh. Right? Just put your hand on you. Put, give me your fucking hand. I'm grabbing your hand. <laughs> that's how I would have talked to her. Thought, See, that's, that's my second tip. Thought the same with the Hulk. I mean, you, you figure the Hulk's dick would get bigger. Absolutely. He's just fucking Scarlett Johansson. He's destroying Scarlett Johansson. Mm-hmm. She's the he, he's the only man who can please her. <laughs> I thought about this. Let that be a lesson to you guys. Okay, so the, the, those are the tips. Those are the tips. Just follow them. Be good at be good at something. Uh, uh, um, what you you don't agree with uh, that? Well, I, I women say... like skilled men. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're not dealing with women. They're dealing with girls. Okay. So they, they must present oh, okay, an illusion. Okay. They must present an illusion. I don't know how to help you with fucking girls. Illusion. If they listen to this podcast, their illusion will not be. I mean, you guys are good people. You, you guys are good. You, you're good men. You're good people. But to the opposite, uh, the opposite sex, you are a repellent. You know when they say be yourself, that's horseshit. It's be your best self. I th- and I think that might have been one of the Black Phillip things. But, but yeah, that's what it is. It's not yourself now. Because yourself now isn't getting laid or whatever the fuck it is you want. You can improve. And I am full, full of shit because I was, in, I was in South Carolina this past week for work stuff. And I did good for like the first two days, two, three days. And then uh, it was all ribs and ice cream and hush puppies. Well, I, I would think that butter. in an area like that, there wouldn't be a lot of healthy options. There really isn't. Yeah. Their sal- salads are the best you'll do. But, you know, it... Ah, fuck. I don't know... 
I just can't do the salad every meal, man. I, it makes me depressed. And all my friends are eating fried chicken and ribs and shit. And, dude, I know why they're fat down there. That's they, they're, they're, There's no Whole Foods in South Carolina, man. Mm-hmm. It's all fried chicken joints. It's Zaxby's, which is a chicken place, Chick-fil-A, Sonic. It's And there's no chains. I'm sorry, there's no mom-and-pop places. There's no small place that was owned by a family. Everything is a chain. Everything is dumped full of sodium. I had the best ribs yesterday, though, man. Hmm. Fuck. Just soft. You saw, uh, you saw no, uh, no Confederate flags, no protests, nah. anything like that? I was in a I was in a city that was like an hour north of Charleston, so I didn't see that. But I, I saw the on the TV there were all the all those um, broken dicks. Yeah, broken a lot, lot of broken dicks mm-hmm. reported by CNN. Mm-hmm. Tammy, we have broken dicks everywhere. Back to you at the headquarters. <laughs> Thank you, Charlene. We'll be right back. Mm, okay, so you weren't around any of those areas. I mean, nah, w- man, were you expecting the- to be around? Around there, you knew exactly where you were going. I knew exactly where I was going because I went last year. I was expecting maybe one flag or two, but I didn't see any. I saw a lot of creepy ass old white people, and down there, when I see them, I don't look them in the eye. I just I feel uncomfortable, and it's you just they look at you, and I don't know if it's me what are thinking. You at, nigga? <laughs> as soon as you look at one of them, there's somebody in the background just like that. It's it's a guttural noise, but it, the only clear word would be nigga. <laughs> I would laugh, dude. That's too, that's so over the top. It's like, yeah, it is. <laughs> Just one clear fucking word, and that's it. You're gonna be on the news. You're gonna be on t-shirts. You're gonna be an inspiration to everyone. And then people will rec- They'll find out that you were on this podcast, and then they'll just notice you're a freak. Then they'll just know you're a freak. That's it. It's over, man. And I was at this place getting some ice cream from, and, and a nice, uh, a nice girl who was not of color, let's say, was mm-hmm. serving me, mm-hmm. and uh, she was very pretty. And every time she would, she would turn around to scoop stuff out of the the, the bins. Um, she had yoga pants on, and um, uh, her her ass was very, uh, let's just say, it was very plump. And I was thinking about sticking my face in between them cheeks and licking. It, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got you. I got you. Yeah. Anyway, I. I'm sitting there just beads of sweat dripping down my face. She's like, what do you want? You like, like cookies and cream or something? And I'm just like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and, I just, and I look over my shoulder. I'm like, oh, my God. These, these old white dudes are looking at me, this savage, this savage Negro, looking at this white Were they really ass. looking at you in that way? Or? I, don't, I don't think so. But I, I'm, maybe it was my just knowledge of where I was. Like, cause I wouldn't have thought twice if I was up in D.C. or New York, but down there, I'm like, man, dude, fucking Emmett Till got killed for this shit, man. Any white coworkers with you? Oh, uh, yeah, one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So, yeah, she was kind of uh, the, uh, our guardian. It's like, yeah, you know, we're... <laughs> Well, I mean, time is an issue. I mean, every every area can't be exactly the same. It's it's a it's a progressive world that we're living in. I mean, you know, with the with the recent uh, with the recent events. That ass was progressive. Let me tell you that. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was white. It was flat. Don't lie. It wasn't flat. Yeah, it was flat. I would really like to see your definition of a fat ass. I I would really love to see what you think a fat ass is because I think your definition of a fat ass is what I would what Patrice O'Neill once called C, a, a CD case. <laughs> Uh, Patrice so O'Neill wrong, w- once dude. said that Asians girls' asses look like CD cases. Which is true, but <laughs> complete the CD. I would throw Mexican women into that bunch as well. Mexican women have flat asses? Mexican women have very They wish flat they asses. didn't, though. That's the thing. They want to think they have fat asses. Yeah. They look like they've been sitting on the bench for way too long. Papi, mi culo is grande, okay? <laughs> Every, every Spanish woman Siempre. sounds sounds the same to you. But yes, we are living in a very progressive land. And, and recently, uh, the Supreme Court just um, just decided that gay marriage is legal in all 50 states. I love it. They just take the hammer. Mm-hmm. just whoo, they, they lift the hammer. It fucking takes them five minutes to lift it because it's so heavy. And they just start swinging it in this arc. And all the fucking... The bigots and all the people living in the, the middle, the Bible Belt, they're like, oh, shit, oh, shit. They try and lock up their doors. No, no, marriage is sacred. The hammer keeps going. <laughs> just fucking, 
and they could not oppose it. That's the best part. It's just the shockwaves from the hammer of justice. Dude, people in Texas are still trying to oppose it, dude. They're like, listen, man, state law is bigger than federal law. Hmm. All right. All right, I ain't having no fags getting married, all right? I ain't, I ain't having them fags get married, them two men. Them two men touching each other with love and care and touching each other's penis. That person sounds like he's about to get converted suck, in a minute or two. <laughs> sucking each other's dicks and whatnot. That just ain't right, Melissa. It just ain't right. I just... I just can't take it no more. He locks himself in his bathroom. He's just rocking back and forth, thinking about them broken dicks. You know, I, I would, I would say that if there was gonna be like one thing on the top of like the liberal fucking pyramid of like things that need to be passed, I would say that that the uh, you know the, the selling of, of automatic weapons. I think that should be, you know, I think gun laws should be tweaked before I give a shit about uh, gay marriage being legal. But that's just me from my perspective. Because people aren't dying from, I mean... Of course people, people are dying! What, what kind of weapon did this fucking fucktard No, use? I just said people aren't dying because of gay marriage. The only oh, thing right. that's causing people to die from gay marriage just remotely is... Uh, AIDS. Healthcare. Mm. Okay. Healthcare. Oh, Someone saying, uh, not okay. had, being able to I, be on I, I, I was grossly misinformed by, when I said AIDS, but okay, continue. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> eight. Eight. People aren't even dying from fucking AIDS anymore, man. That shit's gonna be. They're gonna fucking cure that shit by the time we're dead. You keep and thinking, cancer. You keep thinking that. It's true. You know what we need to legalize next before gun laws, prostitution. I'm saying that right fucking now, dude. Mm, okay. Because I mean, do you know how much that would change the game for dudes and women? It's like they Uber talks about this thing. Was like, be self-employed, make your own hours, blah blah blah. You're telling me, okay, you can have a world, <clears throat> you're telling me we live in a world where you can be really good at picking up a ball and throwing it into a hoop. You can be Steph Curry, and that's your skill that you get paid for. Well, when you simplify it like that, you make it seem no. like it's worthless. No, I'm not, okay? You pick the, up a the, ball. The ability to, be, to have tactics, understanding positions of like physics all the shit that those guys can do whatever the fuck you want to say you're telling me you can be really good at that but you can't be really good at fucking that can't be a skill that you can't get paid for well it's porn stars but i'm saying there are people there are men and women amongst us who have those abilities but, but they okay. cannot monetize but, them. But but how how exactly would that work because obviously most of the transactions that happen with prostitution are cash Okay, the government wants not in. anymore. Not, not after I'm okay. president. Okay. So, okay, so what? So Uber is going to have a prostitution service, I guess. No, it's it's you get on the phone, the phone, and you, you you get your app, and it's called like just the app is just called sex. Uber toot. Uber toot. All right, that's Uber, what it's called. Uber toot. You order the girl, uh -huh. and she comes to your place. Okay. Bada bing. Okay, that's all it is. But I think what it would would end up being is like you probably go to a building. That's how they do it in Asia. I don't know how I know that. You go to a building and then they have people there who are like, you're not fucking hurting these girls. You're not doing anything um, that's not right because we'll fucking kill you. And you're going to go to jail. Because then the feds will be involved in it. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm getting at? Mm -hmm. People will get tested, whatever the fuck. They get condoms, all that shit. Girls will feel safe because they won't have to even deal with a pimp, really. Because that's another reason these prostitutes get beat up all the time. But I'm saying people should be able to use their sexual abilities to get money, all right? Do you know how many women are in fucking cosmetology school? And, like, that's their shit? Like, you're, you're fixing hair and nails. Like, that's, that's, like, the most you'll do. And some of these girls, you look at them, and you're like, I just know that your abilities to suck dick are just <laughs> just astronomical. Like, you, you could bring happiness to this world. I'm, I know I'm, it sounds like I'm joking, but I'm not. So prostitution, this is your stance. This is what you think should be. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Dude. It would, do you know how many be, dudes, and I'm going to say this too, dudes who fucking go around shooting up places, do you know how many of them, I would, I'm going to fucking say like 90% of these dudes are fucking stressed out because they never had attention from a woman and they never fucking talked to anybody. They, they never were able to connect with people. First of all, they never saw a therapist, right? Because they probably thought like that they wouldn't, they couldn't help him. Like I bet all these dudes, if you had just a woman just touch them and say that you're fucking, you're okay, they probably just fucking cry and turn into a puddle of Jello 
and then they would just reveal all their shit. Mm-hmm. And maybe we'd throw them in jail after that, or maybe they would actually be able to be rehabilitated. I'm, I'm not saying that's going to solve all our problems, but that's a portion of it. Don't take Sexual this guy. Se- don't take this guy seriously in anything that he says. We don't want to read anything in the comment section of anybody getting upset about anything that we have to say because Dom is being facetious. Obviously, um, uh, I think I I could recall about maybe two weeks ago we had just one female listener, the the only one that we have. Um, uh, oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, she. Uh, I think she complained about my use of. Uh, I I use the word tranny. I think it was. Yeah, it's trans now. Yeah, tra- uh, or whatever. And you know, she said something about uh, you know, you uh, you limit a a multi dimensional being or or something like that. And um, you know, to that one person, the only thing that I have to say is uh, you know, if 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 the Double D's podcast is going to be a basket, uh, a bushel basket at a, at a flea market, and within that basket you have. Uh, you have a ton of broken dicks. Mm-hmm. You, you have uh, a, a, a lot of corny jokes, uh, a lot of existential conversations, uh, mm-hmm. a lot of future talk, uh, hip hop talk. Mm-hmm. And if you can find just one thing in there that you don't like, I say y- y- you rummage through that, through those dicks, through all those jokes to find that one thing that you don't like. You can't take that one thing that you don't like very seriously because you got to consider the source. You got to consider what we are and what we talk about. So if we offend you and we uh, and we say something that, you know, but, uh, do you really think that we have any issues with trans? I mean, of course. Um, well, that's why I said you have to consider the source. You have to consider like, do the source. You, you really think we're not okay with transgender people? Right. Like, does anyone out there think that that we are, are not cool with that? No, but I, I think she knows that, too. She knows that, but it's the word. But that's it's the word. It's, it's what the word it's the represents. Word. And Which is funny. It's, it's really interesting because it's like back when people were saying Tyler was homophobic. And now, but he's like always writing about gay people and like all this golf pride shit and it's like but the word is still an issue right it's like Mm -hmm. i don't understand it's like which is more important the intention behind the word obviously right but i I just don't that's why like i fucking love trannies let me tell you like (laughs) is that a problem (laughs) someone say i'll still continue to use that word i mean it's just look it's it's something that it's and i know it's just it's not the coolest thing it's it's not the coolest shit in the world, but it's like I'm 33 years old. Okay, now Holy it's fuck. only been up until I would say like maybe five six years that this really progressive, yeah, this yeah, really like really, really attention to like language um, has really been taking form. So all throughout my adult years in my 20s, th- this appropriation of language hasn't really existed. It hasn't really been out there. I mean, I think if I can think back to anything, I would think there will be only s- several items that were really like a big deal. And that was um, referring to a, 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 a smaller person as a midget. Mm-hmm. I think that was something that was always like really big. Like, oh, you're not supposed to say that. Obviously, using the word fag, using the word faggot. And of course, you know, nigger is another one but don't say that word around me please okay i will not even though i'm like just a couple shades lighter than you are so (laughs) um so so it's like i've i've used that word in the past before and it's like i'm just not gonna get used to using a a term like transgender it's just not gonna happen trans is is good trans is one no but then because when you say trans it sounds like you're referring to trans fats that's what it sounds oh like. Oh, my fucking God. You just like saying tranny. Trans. Yeah, maybe I just like saying tranny. It's not a word that I'll I should I'll ask you this. Whenever you're looking for porn now, will you type in trans or tranny? Oh, you got me. <laughs> Zing. <laughs> Ba-doom, pss, ba-doom, pss. So we want, you know, before we, we carry out this whole uh, gay marriage thing, I, I just want to say, because I didn't address it on the last week's part, we, you know, we always, you know, we always want to, you know, consider what you guys have to say because we care about you guys. We care about you guys, especially our female listeners, because there aren't a lot of you, you know, the the, the broken dicks out there, they're in abundance, but yeah. uh, the vaginas aren't. So, um, you know. You realize if we had a live show for this shit at some point? All the guys in the crowd would just have casts on their dicks from from them being broken. <laughs> that would be the thing. <laughs> be but like, really though, I, I'm gonna I I'm not even going to say the thing where it's like, 
We support gays. We support trans people. I'm I'm not even gonna fucking say Shouldn't that. Shouldn't have to because it could be yeah because it's so obvious <clears throat> what our stance is and I'm not even gonna try it fucking like no, that's never gonna be a thing because you fucking know how we feel. All right. And prostitution should be fucking legal. I'm gonna say that shit too. Okay. No. Well, you said it already. You said it. I'm already. gonna say it again because listen. All right. You're telling me that cute ass Dominican girl at the bodega. Mm-hmm. Who sits there popping her gum and like twirling it around and she looks at you and she just looks like sex. You're telling me she shouldn't profit from that? She can go and fucking do porn, mm-hmm. which is the same fucking thing. She, enough, like, Dom, enough. Way, enough. Enough. Look, enough, right? Balls all right, all right. <laughs> Balls <laughs> are just spoken. What, what is... <laughs> okay. Do you I'm feel... Really passionate about do, this do you feel like they're will be any backlash from uh from the recent prostitution events <laughs> process. Okay. from what the the tra- the the marriage they said the, from the tranny uh yeah from from uh legalizing gay marriage is there anything whatsoever i mean it's yeah, a hypothetical the question stupid ass, there it? was this one pastor who said the funniest shit uh, um on twitter to this day he said he said june 26 2015 the day the devil danced in this country <laughs> I am ashamed. Um, and he just keeps posting shit like that about like how this world is going to shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what people said back when black dudes were allowed to fuck white girls. The fucking best day in existence. No, I'm, I'm joking, <laughs> obviously. But like, that's what people said back when uh, f- fucking interracial marriage was legalized. Mm-hmm. And and it's they, they don't realize that they're the wrong ones. They don't get it. But yeah, that's the only backlash you're going to get where it's like, hey, man, I think you you might get a surge of hate crimes because um, that's our stock and trade in this country is you yeah. see someone and you hate them because of how they look or behave and you beat them up. You ball up your fist and you hit them. So I think there's going to be um, – honestly, I think, I think the gays are going to – the gays. I think they're going to have to lay low a little bit. It's like don't – you know everyone fucking hates the dude in the parade who has, like, the thong where his dick's hanging out. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, waving the flag. Everyone hates that guy. Gay people hate that guy, mm-hmm. all right? Because he's annoying as shit. Walking that guy attack. needs to... St- yeah, that guy needs to sit in his living room and be quiet <laughs> for, for a few So months. the flamboyant gays. Not ju- just... It's just the idea of, like, like, in your face. Like, don't fucking provoke... Don't don't provoke the the people who are angry at you. I'm just saying that right now. Well, you know, ev- ever since uh, you know the ruling's been well, I mean, this is it's it's always been the case in the city. Obviously, I mean, in the city, if you if you're riding on the train, you'll you know you'll constantly see a gay couple, um, you know, male or female, um, you know, caressing each other and kissing each other and being very open. Uh, and it uh, you know never seems. By to By the be- way, I think it's gross. When dudes do it, and I think it's gross when men and women do it. Yeah. So, no, no, I agree. Oh, I hate it oh, all around. Well, look, but if it's a clear. gay pe- if it, but let me be clear, that? overt uh, P, uh, PDA. No, 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 no. I don't like hand holding. All right. I don't like kissing. I don't like anything. Don't, like anything. don't touch. Don't touch anybody. All right. Mm-hmm. Not around me. Okay. Not I don't right. like that. I separate them. Not around you. Hey, Leave room for is Jesus. It, is, is this a, is this a, the, the, the pit of of loneliness in you? Just like rumbles. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't like that shit. Don't be happy. All right. I put a stick in between them. Don't be happy. All right. Well, you should go back to South Carolina and get that ice cream girl and uh, marry her and her and you know get her to divorce her cousin. Hey man, get away from that girl. Get away from that girl. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I wonder if that's coming out like really clear on the audio. I hope it is. It is. Okay. <laughs> it sounds. <laughs> oh my god. Um. But yeah. What'd you what'd you get into last night? I'm I'm leading you. Tell us about leading you. <laughs> last because I felt kind of disingenuous. Like, hey, what happened last night? I heard you did something well, cool. <laughs> tell us. Let's go to the next segment. I'll tell you what I did last night, Bob. Uh, last night I attended uh, a Mark Marin show. Well, the most incredible stand-up uh, performance I've seen in person, and I've seen some pretty, I've seen some pretty good stand-ups, man. I've seen, you know, I've seen Patrice O'Neill, I've seen uh, Paul Mooney, uh, you know, I've I've seen I've seen some pretty good ones out there. Um, and what made uh, what made this one the best? He seems very similar to your style of 
your like philosophy on life, like the way he talks about things, like he seems very close to how you do that stuff. Uh, how you think. well, the reason why it was so great was because he starts off with. I th- I think it's funny that he he started off with a, a, a statement about the stage. Okay, the stage is huge. This was at the uh, at the Bam Opera House in Brooklyn, so. Marin takes up about 5% of the stage. <laughs> so as soon as he gets on stage, he acknowledges the fact that he feels so inadequate on the stage. Like he's <laughs> letting someone down because all this vacant space and it's just him sitting on his stool. So what he chose to do is he put the mic down and he said he, he performed like theater. So he just stood there and had like a distraught look on his face and went through, you know, he folded his arms. He, he, he was hanging his head and he told the crowd, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. And, you know, just walked around the stage for a few minutes and then came back. <laughs> and then he, you know, kept describing, of you know, how intimidated he is by the backdrop because it looks so grandiose and it's just him here. So but that was him sort of being like. Was that him sort of alluding to the this idea that you can have a soliloquy, you can have a, a, in a play, you can have a guy who stands on the stage by himself and goes like, "Woe is me that the tides might like that sort of shit," and and he's by himself, so he's sort of trying to emulate that. Uh, no, it was it was just it was just him. It was just him uh, trying to make use of the stage. He was oh. just trying to make use of the stage. That's what he was trying to do. And actually, something that you pointed out just now, it's uh, it, it'll connect to something that he actually does. Um, because he knows his act. Uh, but what I felt is interesting about that, because I mean, I've heard a stand up before and I know this is, it's not too far from what he does, but what I think that he does that's unique from any other stand up performer is he, he disarms that the, the weird dynamic of you're coming to see me. Uh, he disarms it by saying, listen, I'm just a piece of shit here on a stage and I hope you really like my show. No one ever does that. Everybody just comes out and they just try to fucking murder as soon as they get on stage. Yeah. And and you know he doesn't do that. But the show was the show was great because because of that reason because he keeps he he keeps breaking the fourth wall every time. So every I would say every 10 to 15 minutes and I'm pretty sure this is planned, he pretends like he's a uh, He's fumbling and searching for words, and he says that there's an inner blogger, there's an inner reviewer that yeah. constantly reviews his show. So he paces, so he goes by everything that he just did. He's like, Marin just talked about same sex marriage. He's obviously not equipped to talk about this serious topic. Blah 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 blah. More <laughs> more later. Like he keeps doing that. He goes more later, and he continues and continues. <laughs> But the interesting thing about what you just mentioned about the whole thing about the theater thing is that obviously there are those very deep and introspective thoughts by the reviewer saying that, oh, uh, Marin is uh, because at one point he said he was talking about Captain Crunch and he was talking about Fruity Pebbles. He said Fruity Pebbles is bullshit because um, because the milk, it's, it's like gay milk. He said <laughs> so. So he said and then he's the inner blogger said, uh, you know, Marin uh, said that it's gay milk. Uh, obviously, the, the colors of Fruity Pebbles are s- symbolizing a rainbow. So he's obviously symbolizing the flag here. You know, so there was like this deep analysis of his usage of the, the, the gay milk thing. Um, but it's but it's stepping out of it's not, it's stepping outside. Yeah, of It's himself. stepping outside of the performance, sort of in the same way. I would think, you know, who does something similar to this, but from a totally Jim different Gaffigan. I'm not familiar with Jim Gaffigan. I know who he is, but I'm not familiar with him. I would say Daniel Tosh. Daniel Tosh is similar in a sense that he's the type of comedian that'll string along some jokes and then he'll acknowledge what he just did. He'll come back and say like, oh, that was a double D's reference and it was a blah, blah, blah reference. I do it because I care. Like he, yeah, he, he yeah. right. He goes over what he just did, but it's in a different, you know, it's in a different way. It's not very self-deprecating. But like, let's, let's talk about, Tosh, like, let's. I'll go even further. Take Anthony Jeselnik. His, he's not talking about himself when he's on stage. No, no. But he's and he's also joking. He's punch the setup. Boom, punch setup. Boom. He's hitting you over and over again. But it's not him. It's a character. It's like this character. You know, what, it's probably a little bit of him because look, he's a very like he's a good looking guy. I almost said very. Good. <laughs> He's a, in comedy. That's that's like a, a it's a no-no. Being good looking, yeah, 
yeah, you got, you better be fucking super funny because you can't be as is it like that's hard. That's mm-hmm. an uphill battle because that's a place for the uglies. That's where the uglies can reign as kings. Mm-hmm. But Jesselnik, his um, he probably is a little bit of an asshole in real life. You you have to be just to be able to write those jokes and perform them like he does. But that character is so far on the other side of the confidence spectrum, where like merit is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's not like. He doesn't seem to be super self deprecating He is self-deprecating, but he is confident, right? Sort of? No. Oh. <laughs> no. There's no there's no there's confidence. There's no confidence? There's no confidence that goes into his act whatsoever. Because, wow. Okay. Because, thought... re- because remember... The, it, 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 when he also when he gets on stage and this this is a pretty uh, a pretty th- something that he does often is he always stresses the fact that he doesn't know how to be happy he's like uh, it's kind of what he said before he started talking about the obama interview i don't know if you guys are if, if you know i'm pretty sure some of you guys are familiar with mark maron's podcast but recently he just did something that's fucking amazing and a milestone for podcasts everywhere uh he interviewed the fucking president of the united states so um you know, he, he said, oh, it's pretty hard to not be happy. So the crowd clapped because everyone listens to the podcast and everyone knows that he has a constant he has a constant inability to be content with his life. So he's always, you know, he, he, there's always a dread going on in his head. And I think uh, I think how he articulated it was life is a constant. Uh, it's a, a it's buffering disappointment. Is what he said. <laughs> Life is buffering disappointment. He's like, you just oh have to deal God. with it. That's what it is. He said because he spoke to his father recently, uh, and his his father, yeah, basically, <laughs> uh, he spoke to his father, and his father said that uh, now that you've interviewed the president, now they can put you on TV where they interview people. So there's still a sense of so he's understand yeah, he's what still he still haven't done anything. He it's like he TV. didn't understand that podcast like that's TV now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, oh my so that's great. But no, he's very self-deprecating. There is no, there is no confidence there. But I did he talk about the interview? Yeah, he talked. Like, he the only thing that he mentioned about the interview was that uh, I mean, he joked that he told the president to uh, to rectify certain things before he leaves office, and the president was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do it." And he was like, "I'm fucking serious, <laughs> I'm fucking serious." And then he was like, I, "You know, I'm not saying that I'm gonna be responsible for what's about to come." He was like, "But I'm just saying." <laughs> what he did say was that when the White House contacted him to do the interview, he said he claims that he literally told the rep, B- my bathroom door doesn't close. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're going to tell the president to come over my house and my bathroom. Do- I haven't fixed it. He said when people come in, to, he, he says he has celebrities come over to his house and use the bathroom. And there's something about the fact that. They have to trust him. He thinks that that's why the interviews go well. They oh. have to trust him because in order to take a shit, they have to leave that door unlocked. Oh so there's the amount of trust God. that goes in there. <laughs> and so then when they're ready for the interview, it's, you know, it's it's a lot easy to, to adjust. I just want to see footage of Obama peeing. I'm going to leave it right there. No, no. <laughs> what if I just end it right there? Footage of Obama peeing. I want to see footage of Obama peeing and... Uh, Mary just opens the door. Hey, what, 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 are you do, what are you doing there, Mark? <laughs> I'm trying to finish. Uh, close the door. Uh, uh, close it. Did he sound natural in the interview? Did Obama? He sound like a real, yeah, did he sound like a real person or was yeah, everything? He, he sounded like a real person, but I guess you couldn't, um, you couldn't avoid talking a lot about... I'm, I'm sure if Mark had his way in the interview, he would want to get deep into Obama's, uh, into his lineage. He would want to talk about you know, even though it's well publicized, you know, he's got biographies out there and you know yeah. that his father was like an alcoholic and stuff like that. But um, he you you wanted to get deep into that. But at the same time, it's like you're talking to the president of the United States. And so many of these there's so much social change to be had right now that it's like it's bigger than him. It's mm. all of this is so much bigger than him. So it's like. I know it must have been difficult because I know he wanted to get into that. And they did speak about his father. And Obama actually shared something that was interesting uh, because he said that uh, his dad was uh, was a, uh, you know, he graduated, I think, from Yale or Harvard or something like that. Uh, but, he ca- you know, he started from the bottom and he got there, but he was never able to manage the success. So he turned to alcohol and, you know, he beat several of his wives 
But at once, damn, that's, <laughs> all that's kind of impressive. He <laughs> line him up. How would Obama's father sound? I I meet my wife at, at Monday. Obama's I meet father's my wife. I, I beat my wife Tuesday. I beat my wife on Wednesday. <laughs> so where is Barack? Bring him out here. I'll beat him too with a pair of Jordans. So he said that the uh, the good thing that his um, his mother and his grandparents did was they, uh, you know, they underscored the good about the father, not the bad. So uh, the way Obama described it was my father was just an abstraction to me. You know, Damn. he wasn't uh, he wasn't like a real thing. I had to do my research to find out that my dad did all these bad things or whatever. But like I said, that this is incredible, by the way, like this is the president. This is something something that he kind of hot. He definitely hit it. I, I think it's just mm-hmm. it wasn't in the open because it's like the, this idea like to be president you got to have a family and all this shit. This is incredible. The guy who's running this country It's fucked up. Yes, that's <laughs> it's so great to me. It's fuck. He's fucked up. And that's the and that's the the, the ongoing theme of of Marin's show is that it's that that he's very fucked up. Towards the end, some you know he was taking questions from the crowd, and something very interesting happened. Uh, he was taking several questions, and you could, I could have blurted out a question. What I wanted to ask him, but I didn't, was, "What would you be doing if you weren't doing comedy?" I wanted to see what he would say to that. But somebody actually asked, "Did Obama take a shit in your toilet?" <laughs> and Did he? when he was answering the questions, he was away from the microphone, and he rushed to the microphone, and he said, "No, no, he did not." No. <laughs> He said he didn't even go in the house. He just went in the garage. Um, but anyway, so something interesting happened, right? So he closes out his show by illustrating a, a behavior that his mother reinforced because his mother gave him body image issues. She makes him oh feel like he's God. fat. Um, so so Marin wanted <laughs> to go into a story of ice cream and what normally happens after a show for yeah. him. So as he's about to get into this story, one girl, he's talking about his mother, and then he goes into the ice cream, and one girl blurts out, this is after the Q&A, the girl goes, oh, no. can you get back to your mother? And when, when she said that, up. yeah, when she said that inside, Ugh. I was like, you dumb bitch, shut your Fucking mouth. Yuck. What are you, Freud? So... How did she? How did she say it though? Can you get back to like she said it in a very authoritative way? Like, dude, I'd rather you just talk about your mother. I'd rather you just talk about your mother. But so, she was quiet the whole show until this. I don't know. I don't know if she was. I don't know if she was one of the people that asked. Her. These are two thousand people in the Bam Rapper house. I have no clue. Uh, God, that is fucking. So how did he handle that one? Uh, he handled it, and he just went back to his mother. He, he went did ba- it. He went back to his mother, and then he tried to go back into the ice cream. And then when he tried to go into the ice cream, I don't know if it was the same female. I think it was. The same female said, can you dance? Do you know how to dance? As soon oh as she said that, God. the entire crowd sighed. The entire crowd was like, shut the fuck up. And then Mark said, no, 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 no. Let's not do this. Let's not do this. He was like, she has a loud voice. She has a loud voice. Please. He, he takes the question, and, and she says, you know, do you know how to dance? And he goes, really? You interrupted my story to, to ask if I know how to <laughs> dance? And, but then, even still, he started shuffling. He started he doing did. a little shuffle. Why? I don't know, man. I've never seen anything like that. I've never oh, seen a performer shit. totally be like, I am he here to it. amuse you. He did it. But yeah. is it like an ironic thing? Was it sort of like a... Like... Cause listen, what happened was, let's let's get down to it. She told him to do something, and he did it. Yes. When did this ever fucking happen? Never. Any comedian would have just been like, like sh- "No, man, I, shut the I fuck control. Up. I run. I run the nickels. Mm-hmm. That like I run it. You're in my world. Yeah. But in that moment, he's like, okay, but why? I don't is know. it is it the same reason? Because I mean, his mother controlled him when he was a kid, or something. Is that? I don't know. I, I don't so he know. shuffled? Yeah, he shuffled. He did a little shuffle or something like that. Like, oh, that's what this is what you want to see? You want to see if I can dance? Look, I'm dancing, I'm dancing, I'm dancing. And then he got back to his ice cream story. And, you know, then he finished the show. And and it, it, it's just something very unique because any, any comedian, any comedian, it doesn't matter if they're whatever the fuck, they're the most pleasant person. They would have been like, listen, I got to get through with my show. Shut up. 
What I thought you were going to say, I mean, he's probably, like, sexually, he probably lets women, like, beat him up. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Okay? Hmm. So, there's probably something in him where it's like, you treat me like a piece of shit or make me do things and I'll probably do them and feel like this is me. Like, this is that real me. If you make me do stuff, then this is like, this is who I am. So That's my theory. So, so you, you mean like uh, he, he prides himself on being subservient? On, 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 uh... I don't think it pride, he prides himself on it. I think it's probably something where it's just like, like the same way if you're dealing with a submissive girl and you tell her to do something, she'll she'll do it and there's no like it's like the, the switch is flipped on and it's like this is my mode this is where I feel most comfortable I want to do this it's like control me tell me what's going to happen I'll do that because I don't this isn't the place where I want to be in control and maybe this is some sort of like a a look into his psyche where he's like if you tell me to do something maybe it's like he feels comfortable doing that or it's sort of like a a, a uh, what do you call it? Um, a trigger for him, hmm. like telling him to do something. Is it? Because it, obviously he didn't. He could have told her not to do it, but he did it. So I, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of hung up on that too. Now that's weird. It could be. It it can also be a narcissistic thing. I mean, if it is Marin, it could be a narcissistic thing. I mean, he'd be the first to admit that he is a narcissist. So if somebody has a question to ask him, he wants to he wants to know what the question is because he wants to talk about himself more. It could oh, could be that too. Man. It could be that, and he'd be the first one to admit if it was. But I think when I was sitting there, I I understood it more of a I'm completely open to the idea of anything. This is free flowing chaos. This is me. Oh, this is me and you. Tell me, tell me to request me to do something. I'm all yours right now. It's it's he he gave people a, a show. Day, yeah. He gave people a show, and it, that that's what it was, man. It was it was a fucking best comedy show that was I, if, if i think anything would be a close second to that i would think it would be when i went to see joey diaz and you know the reason why the joey diaz performance was so great was because joey afterwards is exactly he is exactly who he says he is he's the person who fucking hugs you and he fucking treats you like you're at the fucking olive garden in your family you know what i'm saying it's like yeah. it's like the motherfucker's like hey come over you fucking cocksucker come over here you know so you know a close second was that so it's he gave people a great show, man, and it's and I and I would definitely go back and pay more than what I did, and I had, and I had a great seat. I had a great seat, and I would definitely try to be upfront. Definitely try to be upfront. But you went alone. Yes, I did. I went alone, which which fits to the narrative of going to a, a Marin show. If yeah, fits to the narrative where, of going. Yeah, you don't want to do the thing where you like look you look over to the person next to you like it's so true, isn't it? Like no, <laughs> you're by yourself in the dark basement with him. Yeah, yeah. They, I was alone. I was in between two couples actually. The couple to the to the to the right of me, I was sitting next to the female, and her laugh was actually very comforting. And normally, female laughs are very annoying, but she kept wow, laughing nice. and laughing. But it was a very comforting laugh. She was a big chick. She wasn't attractive, you know. Dad, but that's that. Daddy a wouldn't great dip in it. You know what was that? Yeah, you would. That's a great compliment for someone to say that you have a good laugh, or like, or to have a laugh that makes people yeah like also laugh. Yeah. Like that's awesome. I wanted to tell them afterwards that your girlfriend has a great laugh, but nah. as, as soon as I fucking say it, I'm comfortable enough to like, say, it. what the fuck is he gonna say to me? What the fuck? Listen, hey, 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 listen, buddy, listen. Listen, right? I just, Chill. I just want to tell Chill, you okay? after after the show, after the the show's over, um, she has a great laugh. Uh, hold on to that one. What do you, What do you mean? What do you mean by fucking great laugh? I, I mean, she has. A, I mean, I mean, she my has fucking a, sister. I mean, she has That's a, my sister. What do you mean? Hold on to that. Well, then all the more reason for you to not get so upset, sir. I just what do you mean? I fuck my fucking sister? You, you think I fuck my sister or something? You, you, you think I? You think I do incest? Listen, all, all that shit. Listen, huh? I recently got my gay papers, and uh, I, I'd like to talk to you about gay marriage. What's that? Give Give, give me that. What, what, what's, what's What's this? You trying to get married or something? What is this? Yeah, maybe with you. If, uh, you think I'm gay? Because I am. All right, I'm gay. <laughs> you weren't expecting that, were you? I was not, sir. I was not. Yeah, because I am. Your tone right? of voice is very masculine. I, I, I like I, dicks. Okay, I, I, I like sucking dicks. I, I did not think. Uh, let me ask I'm you a question. I'm, yeah. Let me ask you a question. Do you uh, have you at any point in your life found yourself uh, maybe inclined to be into any form of of uh, dominatrix? Like you, you were into like maybe licking heels or doing some crazy shit like that. Oh, you mean me being submissive? Yeah, you being submissive. I think the only time I was remotely into that, I was much younger. It was like very, it was at the start of my sexual career. 
So I think I was like Sexual 19. Career. <laughs> 19. Very short lived career. Yeah, very short. Because I realized that if you go the other way, you will have fucking a bounty of opportunities and it is amazing. So you go, shoom, the other I I did anyway. But yeah, that was just so short lived for me. Because mm. women don't want to have to do that shit. Like most, most women, the vast majority of women don't want to have to do that shit. It's too much work. Right. It's your job. You do the work. So no 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 submissive nature any 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 of that weird stuff. Man. I wouldn't admit that either. You wouldn't admit. Even if, if I if I was now, I wouldn't admit it. Hmm. Would I? Yeah, I guess. No, I wouldn't because that's that's the thing. It's like I I lick, I lick heels. Like I'm not fucking saying that here because everyone's gonna know. <laughs> Would you admit it? If I like to lick heels, yeah. I'm I'm obviously telling the truth now, but I guess you wouldn't know if I was telling the truth because I told you I wouldn't tell the truth. Well, you know, I guess, I, guess, I guess that's the case, but okay. And of course, everyone is here to please me. Hmm. I'm a solipsist too, so. I mean, would you, you, would, you would admit it if you let women beat your ass with a whip? Why wouldn't I? What's the what's what's problem with that? If that's what I'm into, that's what I'm into. Listen, I, I've addressed on yeah, this podcast sure. that I tell, I tell women that I come a lot. That's fucking horrible. I come a lot, by the way. Daddy's been peed on a few times. It, it's, it's happened. On purpose? It's happened before. Ah, I won't confirm and deny whether it's been on purpose. Oh, yeah, but you're so open, though. You, you tell everybody everything, right? Yeah, I'm like the CIA. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, no, it it, uh, it went down in the shower a few times, and uh, I tried to see if I was into it. I tried to see if I was into it to, you know, run it down my legs. Yeah, that's what you got to do. You're like, am I into this? Yeah. Nah. Well, I mean, yeah. what, what you got to realize, man, is is that, you know, it, you got you to gotta realize that, like, sexuality is a fucking, it's a wonder wheel, man. It's, it's a real yeah, it wonder is. wheel. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's water. It's not a line. It's just, it's, yeah. it's like you're, you're, you're in this pool. You're dipping from this. But, like, you, eh. you'd be very surprised how many things can happen in, in, in a sexual session that would be accidental. But maybe you might be into. Maybe it's your thing. And if it's your thing, then pff, that's what you're into, man. You're just, you're just this weird fucking animal with several holes in you. And, you know. You're right, but the other thing uh, is that if you're no, you, you'll hear this a lot with girls. I have this conversation with girls so often. They'll say things like, actually, normal girls will tell this to me, uh, but they'll be like, "You're so weird that it makes me feel like I need to sort of match you in your weirdness." Mm. And I always say to them, "Like, stop right there. Like, whatever you think that you should be is just it's not." It's not real. You don't have to force anything. So I know everyone fucking on, on the internet is kinky now. Everyone's like, oh, I'm into this shit. Like, you, you're, it's okay. Your thing might be you just want to fuck with the lights off missionary. That might be your shit. Mm-hmm. And if that is, you're okay. That's the other, Do you know what I mean? That's, that's the other side of it. Like, everyone's fucking kinky now with the internet, fucking putting, putting cell phones up their asses or whatever kids are doing these days. But, like, if you don't like that stuff, it's fine. Don't feel like you're inadequate, and you're 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 about to spend uh, 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 your whole lives, listeners, convincing women that what they're into is okay. So good luck with that shit. We've been through this before. That there are no women in their lives. Uh, my mom's in my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Norman, that's fine. Does she, one, does she, yeah. w- one last uh, funny thing that Marin said, um, and I couldn't stop laughing when he said this. He said uh, because he was he was going into detail about his uh, relationships and about his anger. And he said, uh, I've yelled at women before, and I think every man in this room has yelled at a woman at the top of his lungs. And he said, there's only one thing that a man should say when he yells at a woman very loudly. And what he really wants to say is, be my mommy. Why can't you be my mom? Wow. (laughs) Very deep, very deep. Why can't you capitulate like her, to what yeah. I want you to do, just like my mother did when I was younger? Just be like my mother. Oh my god! Unless your mom didn't do what you wanted and was really mean to you. Wow. <laughs> no, but actually, isn't that? Tr- but if your mom was really mean to you, and a girl is super nice to you, that makes you uncomfortable, right? Is that how it goes? Mm-hmm. I suppose. So you're yelling at her to be more mean. Hey, depending on how your mother treated you, you yelling at her for different reasons. Be my mama. Be my mama. 
<laughs> That's unintelligible. What was that? That was <laughs> Don DeMarco, nigga. Oh, the next time a girl bodies you in a in a, in a fucking argument, regardless of how you feel about it, just start yelling Don DeMarco, Don 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 DeMarco, and then she'll be like, "What?" I'll be like, "You just bodied me, girl. You just bodied me," and then you just lick her nipples a little bit. She'll she'll, she'll love, love you forever. I love you. Notice that this, there's a wedding going on. Who's getting married? It's a uh, fucking uh, D Respect and Dom. You remember them? They used to have a, they used to have a podcast. D Respect and Dom. They, yeah, they, they got married. To, yeah, look at them. Oh shit, that is D Respect. I could I could recognize him from here. Yeah, he's he's wearing he's wearing a veil over his. Oh, he's wearing he's wearing a fucking dress. Oh shit. I, I think he's so D Respect is a so D Respect was a bottom. Yeah, yeah it's, oh, it's shit, really, man, actually, see. actually, they're, they're, I think they're both bottoms. I don't, I don't really know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> they're both bottoms. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, yeah, and they, they, they both uh, like they, they, they're getting health care. That no, holy shit. Oh, uh, so, so what's their podcast? What does it sound like now that they're married? It's just them yelling at each other, "Be my mommy" or something. Holy fuck, man, that's fucking. They just, terrible. they just scream for fucking hours. It's fucking awful. That's fucking crazy. Oh my god, this shit. I, I think. I think D-Respect married down, if you ask me. I think he could have done a lot better than Dom. No, it, it's obvious that Dom is, is way out of no, D-Respect. No, 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 wait a minute, no, 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 I totally disagree. In fact, in order to prove you wrong, I'll run up right now and kiss D-Respect right in front of Dom. You know what, son? You, you, you can't do that. You can't break apart this marriage. And you know what else? Furthermore, stop whispering in my ear, son. That shit gay, <laughs> son. Back up off me. Why you whisper? 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 Why you whis